Hi, everybody. Well, I'm Nancy Bell, and I'm really excited to be able to talk to all of you today. I have a lot to share with you, um, including some videos that are brand new that we hadn't uh, seen before. It, it was about four or five months ago that I thought that what I really wanted to do was to start a campaign for comprehension, and that's because if I'm speaking at the International Dyslexia Association or the British Dys Dyslexia Association, 95% of the presentations there are on something other than comprehension. There's very little talked about on comprehension at uh, some of those associations, and there's a lot talked about on whether a child can read the words. And I, after all these years, 20 years of teaching children, I decided that we just need to start something different, and so that's what this is about. This is the first campaign for comprehension. And I'm really excited to be talking to you. I, I thought a lot about how I wanted to start it, and it seemed to me that Maya Angelou had kind of the best um, way for us to start. And that is, when we stand up, we, we must know that we are standing up for everybody. Each of us needs to know, in fact, that we are rainbows, rainbows, rainbows in the cloud for everyone or everybody. So that means all these children that you're going to look at. I have um, pictures that I want you to look at and know that what I'm talking about is not just data. I'm going to show you a lot of data. I'm going to show you a lot. Uh, I'm going to show you some videos. I'm going to talk a lot about cognition. But I wanted you to see that it's really for these children that we're talking, that you and I are going to stand up for these children. And these are children that we see across the United States and some in our learning centers. Um, and as you look at these children, I'm tasking you with your first task, and that is ask yourself what you would want these children to learn in school. We've got them captured in school generally for um, 12 years or 13 years if it's kindergarten, unless they've dropped out. So what would be the most important skill we could teach all those children, and many of them are not doing well in school? Just be thinking about that. I'll give you a clue. It is not reading words. I could teach my dog to read words, probably. If I used a good enough phonics program, good enough synthetics phonics program, I probably could teach a, my dog to bark out a couple of words. But reading's more than, than that. So it's not just reading words that these children need. That young man is the young man that we taught to read when we first saw him. He was at the second, um, per second grade level. He went to the 10th grade level. And he ha was in the juvenile justice system, and that got him out. So there's our kids. What have you all said in this room? What have you said? Say it to one another. What do you think? What's the most important skill? So what did you think? <coughs> did somebody say thinking? Lots of times when I'm making a presentation, someone will say critical thinking. And that's certainly a part of it. Here it is. Obviously, it is that language comprehension is the most important skill we need to succeed in school and life. If you think of that K-12 pipeline and those students that are exiting, they're usually going three different ways. One of them is to uh, higher education, if, the, if they graduate. The other one might be to work. And there's one more on what do you think they might be doing at the end of school. Working. Working's one. So working's one, education's the other one, and the other one is possibly jail. We've done some projects with, we're hoping to do one uh, now with uh, women's prison, but unfortunately that's the case. So language comprehension is probably the most important thing, arguably, I, I don't think anybody would argue with me about that, that we do need to teach in that whole pipeline. Um, and language comprehension is the ability to connect to and interpret meaning, and this is important, for both, for both oral and written language, not just one, not just being able to comprehend what you read, but also comprehend what you hear. Because if you look at that pipeline, you can think to yourself, if I put it back here, throughout school and throughout life, you're probably going to listen to language more than you're going to um, comprehend it, so, or more than you're going to read it. So in the end, it's to comprehend both oral and written language, and it, it's a critical thinking skill. Comprehension is critical thinking. So that means that processing language is a cognitive act. And since it's a cognitive act, the instruction that we do 
must be based on a theory of cognition, and that's not been happening, as you know. What we have seen in the field of education is this, and that is that there are a lot of silver bullets that come along one year after another. Every five or ten years, there's a new fad that we pick up on. But we largely have not built reading and language instruction on a theory of cognition, and we do need to do that. And these are the um, component parts of reading. And so let's just start with this. This is something that I came up with a long time ago in uh, in frustration, in, in fact, out of frustration for uh, when I was getting a master's degree in reading. It was out of frustration that I said, uh, reading is not just a guessing game. At the time that I was going through to get a master's, it was this philosophy, and that was the only thing that you had to teach a child was to use context cues. And so that was what became known as whole language. And what they taught the reading teachers to do <coughs> was to blank out every fifth word and teach the child to guess at it. And they said that that's what we do when we read. We all um, make guesses based on context cues. Well, I didn't agree with it, and I was really frustrated with it because I knew that there were a lot of children that looked like this. They couldn't read words at all, so they didn't have enough words there to guess at context, so that certainly wasn't enough. And I was going through classes. I had been teaching reading for quite a few years, but I was going through classes with teachers looking at me and saying, wait, are they saying that we don't have to teach kids to read anymore? They don't have to teach kids to read words and just teach kids to guess. And so, yes, that's what was being said. But the other thing that is in a, a component part that people focused on for a long time in the field of reading was um, teaching students what my mother used to say we should do, and that is phonics. Well, now we think of that as phonological processing word attack, but years ago that is how we taught kids to read. And the problem is, if that was the focus, we still had um, students that didn't learn to read. So then we started something, that was how I learned, and it was a look-say approach, and that was just simply having uh, students guess at words. Now that's called orthographic processing and word recognition. We have not turned back to that. Um, we are still very focused in the field of reading on word attack skills and developing a phonetic approach to reading. So if I um, put all those up there, what I want, the purpose of me showing you this is that I want to make sure that we're all thinking that reading is an integration of processes. Um, <coughs> the, the, what I want you to see in this slide particularly is that this is a component part, this is a component part, and this is a component part of reading, but those are component parts. They're not why you read. You read for one reason only, and that is to comprehend. And so, yes, if you have some weaknesses in here, you're going to have difficulty comprehending. But, in fact, you can have comprehension weakness and have all of these intact, and that's what we're going to talk about this morning. 